Mrs. Brown stood up. Good. Now, Paddington, I have to meet our little daughter Judy off the train. She's coming home from school. I'm sure you must be thirsty after your long journey, so you go along to the buffet with Mr. Brown and he'll buy you a nice cup of tea. Paddington licked his lips. I'm very thirsty, he said. Seawater makes you thirsty. He picked up his suitcase, pulled his hat down firmly over his head and waved a paw politely in the direction of the buffet. After you, Mr. Brown? Uh, thank you, Paddington, said Mr. Brown. Now, Henry, look after him, Mrs. Brown called after them. And for goodness sake, when you get a moment, take that label off his neck. It makes him look like a parcel. I'm sure he'll get put in a luggage van or something if a porter sees him. The buffet was crowded when they entered, but Mr. Brown managed to find a table for two in the corner. By standing on a chair, Paddington could just rest his paws comfortably on the glass top. He looked around with interest while Mr. Brown went to find the tea. The sight of everyone eating reminded him of how hungry he felt. There was a half-eaten bun on the table, but just as he reached out a paw, a waitress came up and swept it into a pan. You don't want that, dearie, she said, giving him a friendly pat. You don't know where it's been. Paddington felt so empty he didn't really mind where it had been, but he was much too polite to say anything. Well, Paddington, said Mr Brown, as he placed two steaming cups of tea on the table and a plate piled high with cakes. How's that to be going on with? Paddington's eyes glistened. It's very nice, thank you, he exclaimed, eyeing the tea doubtfully. But it's rather hard drinking out of a cup. I usually get my head stuck or else my hat falls in and makes it taste nasty. Mr Brown hesitated. Then you'd better give your hat to me. I'll pour the tea into a saucer for you. It's not really the done thing in best circles, but I'm sure no one will mind just this once. Paddington removed his hat and laid it carefully on the table while Mr Brown poured out the tea. He looked hungrily at the cakes, in particular at a large cream and jam one, which Mr Brown placed in, on a plate in front of him. There you are, Paddington, he said. I'm sorry they haven't any marmalade ones, but they were the best I could get. I'm glad I emigrated, said Paddington, as he reached out a paw and pulled the plate nearer. Do you think anyone would mind if I stood on the table to eat? Before Mr Brown could answer, he had climbed up and placed his right paw firmly on the bun. It was a very large bun, the biggest and stickiest Mr Brown had been able to find. And in a matter of moments, most of the inside found its way onto Paddington's whiskers. People started to nudge each other and began staring in their direction. Mr Brown wished he'd chosen a plain, ordinary bun, but he wasn't very experienced in the ways of bears. He stirred his tea and looked out of the window, pretending he had tea with a bear on Paddington Station every day of his life.